First we have Deadly Influencer from Lifetime. Now this got 2 stars according to IMDb but fuck that, shitty cliche Lifetime movies are my favorite guilty pleasure. It's about a teen named Skylar who is disturbed and controlling. Obviously. And she tries to take over fellow schoolmate Jessica's social media career, and eventually, her life. It's a Lifetime movie so it spoils itself from the very beginning with a prologue showing us how bad, obsessed and murderous Skylar is. Now I'm not sure how this works, but I think people get on TikTok and stuff because they don't want conventional jobs, which require degrees usually. And Skylar is saying that if Jessica does what she says she'll profit enough to pay off college, and I'm confused because if I were a millionaire influencer, or even a five figures a year influencer, I would forget that a college is even a word, wouldn't you? But anyway, that seems to convince Jessica to give her little life up and dedicate everything to Skylar's regimen and schedule. In the cut, though, is our equalizer. Our sort of deus ex machina. Skylar's half-sister, stepsister, whatever, named Doreen. I don't know who directed her to act like a creepy made from a Victorian haunted mansion movie, but okay. Just weird, but I know there are weird people out there in real life, so here we go. Doreen is abused by Skylar, as they're orphaned and somehow take care of themselves. Lifetime is unrealistic sometimes and expects us to fill in missing context for them. But I don't know how two teens who haven't graduated high school and who have no parents and personality disorders live in a big house. Maybe it's an inheritance, but I don't remember anyone at all mentioning that. That doesn't mean she did not mention it. It just means I don't remember at the time of writing this sentence. Anywho. Doreen looks up to popular social media manager Skylar, who networks and walks around in suits at school. But Skylar hates Doreen because they only share one side of the family, who was abusive. Also, Jessica's portrayal was also ridiculous. Teens who get big on social media with or without management are not necessarily educated experts on what they talk about, especially regarding beauty. They didn't go to beauty school, they don't have a cosmetology license, they don't know terms that Jessica would say during tutorials. They literally just silently do makeup on top of background lo-fi chill music and maybe storytime ramble and that's usually it. Making Jessica a teenaged, prodigal Martha Stewart was ridiculous and laugh out loud. I'm not saying teens aren't educated, but the average teen influencer is not professionally trained in what got them viral. They also normally have the look they propagandize, yet Jessica looks like a math teacher. The stupidest part of this is funnily enough our lead antagonist, our main character Skylar. Firstly how she didn't even properly kill the first girl. The girl survived the fall, and she killed her at a crowded party that she was holding. And then she is verbally abusive to the person who she leaves her laptop around and her door unlocked. If you own the house as you tell Doreen all the time, then you can put locks on the door. And you should lock your laptop, dum-dum. Half the film wouldn't have happened if she understood the concept of locks. I normally can figure out the purpose of the villain and the moral of the story. But this one didn't make much sense to me. Who can possibly relate to Skylar? I'm not a big social media person, so I don't know how common people like her are. I don't know if these influencers who everyone knows have managers. They probably do which I find sad to be honest, that a hobby and a lucky pot of gold has turned into a full-time job requiring management and nonsense. I doubt real-world influencers have kids for managers though. I do feel, however, that celebs of all kinds could have psycho managers, though. I'm not sure how the mom of Skylar's first victim connected the dots to Skylar. I was watching and nothing practical happened. From our perspective, we as viewers need her to figure it out. But based on the information the mom had inside the situation, Skylar is not a suspect at all. How does being popular on social media connect to falling to her death? It's a big gap in reality. But whatever. Then of course the Nancy Drew bit happens crammed in at the end when Jessica puts everything together quickly on her own, perfectly. This was honestly a painful bore to sit through, have to be honest. The acting was atrocious, the storyline was just ridiculous. The spiel at the end of the movie about social media was less than stirring. Social media isn't going anywhere. Unless everyone deletes their accounts. 
When she said she was going to turn off her phone, I was like okay. Breaks from social media and not obsessing over social media is fine. But people don't really obsess over social media over popularity foolishness per se. Now it's their income, big income. Now people can't just turn off their phones. They'll go broke. Which is sad. Partly, it's great that people can make supplementary income just being themselves on a computer, but now that people are being untrue to themselves or the worst version of themselves because their whole paycheck depends on it, that's so sad. And they may or may not have social media managers, who are or aren't crazy, so this film for me was a flop. There are other social media lifetime movies that are better. A movie about an influencer going crazy on their own due to social media obsession would be better, for starters. The crazy kid manager was just silly. Next is ID theft of a teenager. This is one of my favorite lifetime movies so far. Everything about this movie was perfect to be honest. For a lifetime movie, at least. The lead actress playing our main character villain named Vicky was great. Pretty, good enough acting, unintentionally funny. All I ask for from a lifetime or TV movie, honestly. A light thriller. It's about, and here comes the sad part, a 30-year-old woman, who steals the identity of a teenager, as you can guess. And she lives out her dream of being a cheerleader in high school. Now, I know this is ridiculous. I know. Somehow she got enrolled in school with a fake identity. Everyone has a right to education, so whether the school can verify her or not, she'd still be able to get enrolled at the start, I suppose. But that shows a huge lax in safety and security at schools, which is a whole nother conversation. They really just let an, at the time, harmless full-grown 30-something person join the high school student body. Well okay, then. But for some reason, she wants to relive high school. To do it over. I would love, love to redo my high school years. But I'll let that shit go, because I'm not fucking going back to high school if you fucking paid me. Okay, maybe if you paid me I'd go back for like, a month tops. So she's here with her backpack and awkward elderly self. Kids know when you're older. They just do. One time. I was new at school. 8th grade, 12 to 13 years old. The school counselors put me in the wrong class on my first day and escorted me to the 7th grade class. Instead of 831, they took me to room 731. Don't ask how, please don't. And for the whole day, I'm 12 to 13 around 11s and 12s, and having a horrible time. And when I find out I'm in the wrong class that day, the teacher and some students are like, I knew something was off. Like, how? We're practically the same age, dude. Kids just sniff out the maturity in someone because maybe it's intimidating to them. And they pull away. Kind of like Robin Williams playing Jack, I don't know. Anyway. I can't stand the girl who plays Vicky's new high school friend, Heather. I just don't like seeing her in movies, she looks too plain and kind of big like a roller derby girl, and kind of too old, and she never seems happy in her movies. Now roller derby girls are hot, but they're not high school-esque, and she just seems miscasted every time. Anyway. I say all that to say, it's hard to watch a Lifetime movie when she's in it. So scenes with just her and not Vicky, I want to skip past. Some background about Vicky is that she is from a rich family, but she is a failure to them, specifically her mom. Vicky didn't go to college, yada yada. So now Vicky is in her 30s working part-time at a supermarket, which is bad enough, but now they lay her off due to funding issues and wanting to skirt around labor laws like giving better pay and benefits. Now I don't think working at a supermarket as a grown adult is bad. It's money. It's only quote, bad, because other people think it's bad, and make you feel bad for working there, turning people away from decent honest lifestyles. Vicky gets pushed into this weird situation from depression and anger and self-esteem issues living as a spinster with a deadbeat boyfriend. It's very sad. And Heather sniffs her out. I hated that. Vicky wasn't a murderer, at the time. She was just weird. If something isn't off, Heather, just stop talking to her. Why sleuth her out? She wasn't hurting anyone, at first. And then Vicky snaps and yes, does start hurting people and going after the guy Heather likes. 
And now because her secret is unraveling, Vicky has to take down whoever is in her way. It was an enjoyable watch, relatable although unrealistic. Nice pace, decent performances, good plot, good moral of the story which is, live your own life and be happy for it. Well without giving too much of the movie away, 9 slash 10 stars to pass the time, 8 stars overall for how well it was made.